Hey guys, Matt, Iron Trap Garage. Today what we're gonna do is work on making engine mounts for the yellow T. So you guys might remember the last time Spencer and I worked on getting the engine and trans set in its home and uh, just getting it mocked up on some tubing just so that it would hold its own weight. Now what we need to do is work on getting the front engine mounts uh, set and tacked in place. That's usually the first thing I do is get the engine squared in the frame and uh, in line with the rear and we can get front motor mounts set get them tacked in place, get the engine bolted to the front, and then the next time we work on it, we'll work on getting a trans mount. So we're gonna work on getting this set up, and uh, we'll show you guys the process along the way. For the frame, or I can come forward, I don't know. Figure it out. Now, why don't you let me spin, all right? Yeah. Right. You said you're, you're in the down first. Alright, so what I usually do is get the laser set up and try not to kick it like we just did. And uh, we'll get the center of the front cross member. Uh, we'll get it centered there and then have somebody in the rear kind of guiding you on the center of the rear cross member. So we're way off, right? So we'll get Whoa! Oh my god! That's left. Oh, I know, I'm not on on the rear. Hold on, or the front. How's that? That's pretty damn close. I'm dead on in the front. Okay. Literally, it's just like a. 16. No, that's okay. Yeah, we have a little bit of adjustment, so. All right, so you can see the laser. I'll show you guys close up. We have it running down. It's hitting right here on our center of our. Uh, spring front cross member area. It's actually pretty close on the center crank pulley bolt, but we're off just a hair. And you go up over here, you can see it's off the carb just a hair. And we run down in the back, and you can see on the cross member here, we're really damn close. We might need to move it just a tiny bit, but we're, we're pretty close. We, yeah, we gotta go over just a little bit. You can see on the rear here, we're off. So we just gotta adjust the back just a tiny bit here and we'll be, be good to go. Yeah, you can see just off a little bit. So using that laser really, really helps you. So we'll get this adjusted and then we'll, we'll show you guys adjusting it. All right, so we jockeyed the laser around just a little bit more and got it sitting a little better so we could see our line. You can see in the front here, we're pretty much right onto our line that we drew on the front cross member. It's right there. Um, then in the rear, we're right on the cross member, right on the line we drew on the center of the rear cross member from the beginning, so we're good there. Um, now what I use a lot of times for the engine is you can use this uh, the center stud here. You can also use the center here where the fuel pump mount is. You can use right here on the shift tower and you can kind of get that centered. And then of course you can use um, like your top of your generator and also of course your crank bolt down there, which you can see we're a little off. So Spencer and I just threw the engine in real quick for weight and now we just gotta get it squared up. So we're gonna tap around the engine. This takes quite a while to get it dialed in, but we should be able to get it after a few tries. Andrew, do you wanna stand back here? And you six so you can get a center line on the trans. Because that's pretty close now. It, it looks close, but again, you need to stand. And look, we're really close on the carb Damn, stuff. that's... Really close. You can go like another hit, maybe. Yeah, that's what it looks like on the stud. Whoa! Yep, yeah, and we're about almost centered on the stud. Yeah, that's, that's, that's about that's good there. Good. Okay. I would we're, say you probably leave it there. We're good. We're Okay, so we're good there. So now let's move to the front. We'll check that. Good, and I'm gonna watch. Yeah, your ass is always hanging out. I know. I lost weight. So my pants. Put a belt. Up. Tighten your belt up. I got a lot of holes on my belt. I Make got, a new hole. I know. Oh, I, got, I, got, I got a hole punch right here. I should. Have. I got a. I got a nice punch here. I used the punch actually before I head out today. That helped a little. Watch the box tubing too, man. Let's 
going. How many more? Are we? Uh, let's call it there. My thing is. Make sure it's not gonna fall off the box. It's not. You have plenty. Matt and Spencer take the weight of the engine off the temporary engine mounts so they can be removed. Once removed, the fabricated mount can be lined up with the mounting ears on the engine and can be marked for drilling. So we got uh, some tack welds on the uh, on the motor mount brackets, and I uh, tried to weld a couple on the underside, and then a couple, three or four across the top, uh, just around. Nothing real crazy. I'm gonna go back over these and, and uh, you know fully seam weld them in a, once we get a little further along. But let's test it and see if it'll hold its own weight. Let's hope. <laughs> yeah. Let's see. All right. And, oh man, and it's, it's hanging. Going. There we go. LOT has engine mounts and doesn't have a jack holding the engine up. Sweet, so really simple. It keeps the mount kind of, uh, kind of flush with the top, which I think is kind of clean looking. And we got those factory biscuit mounts underneath there. And here in the back, we still have the trans just sitting on a on a bar, engine isn't fully level yet, um, so we're gonna have to adjust that a little bit. Uh, but it is centered, and now it's located, so we can move it around a little bit without uh, worrying about knocking it out. All right, so we got some real simple uh, biscuit mount uh, brackets, well tack welded into the frame. Like I said, we got the engine all mounted in place, and it is set, which is uh, kind of an exciting point with this. Uh, nothing fancy, flashy. This is just real simple down and dirty building traditional hot rod stuff. So these brackets were just made out of eighth inch steel that we built on my press brake. And uh, you know we, we modified them a little bit to get them to sit in really nicely and uh, used the hole saw and welded them in. So real simple stuff, but we got the front engine mounts made. Now what we're gonna do next time is uh, we're gonna try and make uh, transmission mounts that actually come off of the stock center Model A uh, cross member. Uh, a lot of times guys will take the center cross member out and they will put an F1 style cross member in. 
uh, which is, to be honest, is a lot of work. Um, and you have to really be careful taking that out that the frame doesn't want to rack on itself. So what we're going to try and do is uh, actually make some transmission mounts off of that. And then we're going to try and look at making uh, or modifying that the center um, cross member to fit a set of F1 pedals. Not quite sure how it's going to work, but we got to go one step at a time. So uh, next time we're going to work on getting some tabs made to mount the transmission to hold the uh, 39 style transmission in place. And once that's done, we're moving pretty good because we don't have uh, any more uh, bars or jack stands holding the drivetrain in place, and we can uh, we can start you know moving, putting the body back on, and moving the thing around, which is pretty exciting. So that's all I have for this one. Hopefully, you guys uh, got a little information out of this and maybe gave you some ideas for uh, mounting a V8 in a Model A frame and using a 2627T body on top of it. Bunch of stuff together. Looks like stock. Uh, as always, we do videos on Tuesdays, Fridays, and Sundays. If you haven't, definitely subscribe. Uh, if you guys want to follow my day-to-day -day madness, I post a lot more content and things that are going on on my Instagram, at Iron Trap, so you guys can follow me on there as well. Thanks, guys. Catch you later.